Well, good day, folks, and today is Sunday, and it is May 5th, 2024. Boy, the old time is just zooming by. And the weather today is a little bit cloudy. It was mostly cloudy all morning, but it seems to be breaking up now and some sunshine. It is supposed to be sunny today. And it is supposed to be 15 degrees Celsius. So finally, a little bit of warmth, maybe. The last, this past week was just nasty weather. Cold and wet and windy. Yesterday it turned out to be not too bad. It was kind of, it was kind of cool, but uh, at least it turned out to be sunny. They were saying cloudy and rain, so they obviously were wrong yesterday. My son and I were out digging up <coughs> spruce trees yesterday. And that kind of did me in. <laughs> I don't know how many he's dug up now, but anyway, he put in, I think, I'd say 15 trees. He got, uh, we got, I think, uh, maybe more than that. That's about Twelve little trees, they were about mm, three feet maybe, two to three feet tall. And then we got two or three, I think three, uh, about five foot tall ones. Those ones are kind of nasty to dig out. Uh, the little ones aren't too bad, but still, I was a huffing and a puffing anyway, so. <laughs> but. Not too sore today, I'm kind of surprised. Anyway, so today is uh, the Sunday uh, Fireside Chat Day. And, even though it looks kind of nice outside, it's still kind of cool yet, so just waiting for the temperature to get up. Now we do have the fire on today. And uh, and this is, uh, I think, what time is it? It's 10 o'clock in the morning, I think. Yeah, quarter after 10. So the Sunday afternoon fireside chat has been videoed in the morning of Sunday. <laughs> anyway, my son is coming today for lunch, so he and his heard her coming for lunch, so I didn't know when uh, to do the fireside chat, so I thought I might as well do it and, and have it done, in case I didn't get it done. So, And I say lunch, but I should have said dinner. Noon time is dinner time. Some people say lunch, I guess. But Anyway, on to the forecast. And it is four degrees out, so that's not that warm out yet. So I think I'm kind of getting on to this now. Four degrees equals 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Ooh, that one's a 39. <laughs> anyway, and thankfully it's a south southeast wind today at six mile an hour. We had north wind all week, and that's normal for this time of year, north winds. So, 59 degrees today, if it gets to that, Fahrenheit, and 15 Celsius. So, the weather is just going to be so-so for the next week. It's coming, it's coming better. It'd be nice to have a little more heat. I'd love to see it stay around that 15 degree mark. Let's so have some rain tomorrow, maybe two, so a little bit of rain, and then Rest of the week is not too bad up until Saturday, but that could change by then. So, so that's that. So what went on this week? Well, this week was hiding in the garage week <laughs> because it was too cold. <laughs> now I don't know if I kind of finished up this one with you or not, but this one I believe is ready to to go and cut grass. Uh, I think we had that one done. 
I probably mentioned that last week. Uh, of course, you have to get it out yet and drive it around and cut grass to make sure, but uh, I'm kind of thinking that it's going to be all right. But if something does happen, it should only be minor. So I'm still fooling with this one here. Um, I did try it again yesterday, and it did start on the second pole. But, uh, as I mentioned, I haven't had it outside to run it up on the throttle to see if it'll work. But I did run it up in here yesterday a little bit, and it wasn't working that great. So, more adjustments on the high-speed jet. So I got it to where it seemed good. Of course, like I say, you'd have to get it outside and, and run it to make sure, but it all seemed good yesterday on the upper end of the throttle. So now, when you change the uh, high speed jet, that changes the mixture in the idle circuit jet. So we'll have to see if it will start today on the second pole. Well, that is the thing about these. They're finicky and very fine adjustments on these carburetors, it seems. So let's do that now, and then we'll see how that goes here. I can get you set up here. <coughs> Okay, get that. There we go. Something like that. All right. So we'll see if it'll start today after my adjustments from yesterday. So, no throttle. Full choke. Key on, clutch in. All right. There we go. See that now? No, sir. Four holes today. That isn't too bad anyway, I guess. But. There now. That's not too bad. Four folds I can kind of live with. I'd rather two. But anyway. But I will try again. The idle mixture screw right there by the end of my finger. I'll turn that out again today and then we'll leave it and try it again tomorrow. Anyway, so that's that. What do we got going else what else going on here? Wood pile's getting down. So I've been burning a bit of a bit of waste oil here to kinda get that burnt up and uh, and uh, save on wood. <laughs> And no, I'm not showing you my waste on my burner. I'm going to try and get to this here someday. Hopefully within the next week or two. I got to cut, cut this. Cut that. Build this piece onto that piece. 
but I've got to do some thinking as to how to cut this and how to fit this and how to weld it is the other thing. So there's people that would know exactly 100% how to do this. And I'm at about the 10% mark on that. So I'm going to have to uh, look at some welding videos and I think some of them when they weld stuff like this because they're different metals that's why I had to buy these rods apparently these are meant for uh, let's say, uh, no, I don't think it does anyway they're supposedly meant for Welding dissimilar metals. Anyway, I don't know. So anyway, this is a just basically a cast steel, I think. This is a more of a steel one. So this is supposed to last a lot longer than that. That, as you can see from this one. new, worn out. And I've shown this before, I guess, but anyway. Worn out on the bottom here, too. Not supposed to look like that. <coughs> Holy cat, excuse me. <sighs> anyway, that's why they don't plow very well because this side is trying to pull the plow into the ground this side is trying to pull push the plow out of the ground so once you get to that point there then you might as well not be going into a plow match because you ain't going to win so still has some of the suck underneath here but this should have been this can't be worn here Let's see if I can show the other one. It's kind of kind of downhill there. You can kind of see right from here here on it. Let's focus, 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 focus. Not going to focus today. Anyway. This isn't warm because, like I say, it's new. And uh, that point here that keeps the plow in the ground. Where the other one doesn't. <laughs> anyway, so i got to fix that somehow. Now, because of these the way they are, if you put that on new today and went plow the field, new today, Plow field for eight hours, that's what it would look like. That's how quick it would wear out. New worn. <laughs> so, anyway, these are supposedly a much better tip. They're made for a different uh, attachment, of course, but the tip is what my buddy does. He cuts these off and cuts these off. Well, that to that, like I say, I gotta, I gotta do some uh, learning on how to do that. Now, the other thing I gotta do is keep um, when you're welding that. I guess too, you're supposed to take your, oh, I don't know what you call it, your hammer. It's not a hammer, but it's a, it's a. Hmm, don't even have mine here now. Where did that go? Anyway, it's just like a, a chisel, I guess, on the end of the hammer. And while you're welding, you uh, you kind of ding, 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 ding. It helps kind of take the stress out of the two pieces so that it doesn't crack. So once you're done welding, you're supposed to take it and put it into 
uh, when the fire is down to like a cold, throw them in there and uh, leave them overnight. So they just slowly cool off so that they don't crack. That's what I got. A, I got too much ash in there at the moment, and I haven't cleaned it out, and that's the reason why. I got a. I might see if I can get some down into the pan under underneath. But. So that's kind of another reason why I'm keeping the stove going, although I do need the heat. Okay, so what else is going on? Um, I'm hoping to, and I know I've said this before, I, I still got to get back and get to the wood cutting again, of course. So, so I'm going to try and take that someday and give that a little going. Um, An old saw that's a mid 60s saw, and it has a has a uh, plunger there for your barrel. Also, well, it's not automatic oiling, so you gotta manually oil it. So I did have it running, and then I had troubles, and then I got it running again, and I think it still runs, but I haven't running haven't had it running since last year, probably. Yeah, probably in April of last year, I guess. So we're going to try and get it out again and uh, give it a little go. I think I might ch might sharpen the chain on it. I, I don't think I've ever sharpened the chain. This is an old saw that was given to my son years and years and years and years and years ago, and it sat up on top of that cabinet there, that white cabinet, that little space up top there, that's where the saw sat for 15 years. And for some reason I thought I'd better get it down and maybe just clean it up and put it out on display more so than anything. Of course then I thought, well, I better see if I can get it going, I guess. So, like, so I did, and but had a few troubles. But the odd thing that happened to it was the points that were in it, the arm of the points broke in half. And if I remember right, it looks like when I uh, fixed it that it had broken before, but I refixed it and sure enough it run. And, uh, and I did get an electronic an electronic system to change the points out, but I didn't do that. I fixed what was there. That's what I like doing. I like fixing what's there. And now, where would the... Oh, there it is there. Of course, it makes you wonder how I would remember where that is or find it. But <laughs> that's the thing to fix that home light saw. It's amazing I still have that. Well, I, it's amazing that I could find it. Let's put it that way. So anyway, that's something else coming up someday. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get it over over to cut wood sometime. It's a noisy old saw, and. Of course, that vintage, there's no no safety brake on it. But I guess they were a popular saw in their day. Yep. All right, what else do we have today? Um, I don't know. I got. Well, I did that last week, so you probably know about that. I got the 
summer tires and wheels on my truck. Yeah, I remember doing a, a little video on that. So I retorched them today, and about eight out of the ten on this side, of the driver's side, needed a little extra turn. They weren't out to the point where they'd be dangerous, but so that's a, a good reason why you need to retorque your wheels after you put aluminum wheels on, more so than steel, but uh, it's best to do them all. So in the other side, there was only, I think, two that needed a little extra. On this side, for some reason, and there was about eight of them that needed an extra bit. So that's good to have done. Now what else? Am I, what are we at here for time? Okay. I'll have another sip of coffee here and then I'll get into the into the these here. I have no stickers this week to put up, so anyway, that's the way that goes. Now, I wish I could remember what everybody did, so I could say, oh dear. The Grampy's Workshop. Uh, oh dear, Mike, I can't remember what I, what I watched. And, Grampy always has one on Friday evening, so. Oh, and Luke, I remember what Luke was doing. He was rolling boulders down his, his backyard, going to do some more boulder work. He might be in competition with, uh, with Fred, or modern Fred Flintstone, who lives in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Murphy Mowers. I can't remember. Please, what did you do? Well, it's like they say, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't seem to remember. Anyway, Murphy Mowers, he had a, a, a video on there this week. Lynn's keeping busy. I would say Lynn is done with his castle. And oh, that's a lot of work. Uh, Lynn's a creative fellow. Yeah. And garden tractor boy. Well, I got to watch your video yesterday, Joseph. I <laughs> I'm ahead of you this week. <laughs> Great video on the PTO installation on the Bowen tractor, Sandy. And then we have Boater Bob. The backyard with Dell. Dell was fixing up his uh, gas tank for his David Bradley tractor, I think it was. Yeah. Dale is going to go to a, a lawn and garden show in Evansville, Indiana. That goes on every year, I guess. Uh, it's all mostly all garden tractors, so well, I'd like to go to that. But anyway, Dale says he's going to get some video of that when he's there. And we have Brock at Lewis Mowers and Boats. And we have maintenance with Mike. Mike has got two big projects coming up. Going to be using the tractor a lot, I would say, to dig up ground and level stuff out. And anyway, he's got two big projects there. One is going to be a, a gravel, a gravel uh, floor kind of thing to set off his attachments for his tractor on. And the other one is his walkway out in front of his house is kind of fallen away. So he's going to diggy up and pour concrete and 
fix that all up. And Dave, uh, Dave, 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 Dave's got a video out this morning, and uh, of course I didn't get to see that yet. But it looks to be like it's on backhoes for your tractor. And Kenny at Open Air Adventure, he been very busy lately, I guess, so he hasn't had time to even watch the videos, anybody's videos lately, so I'm sure he'll get back on track here soon. And Mr. Gary, Mr. Gary's got two or three videos out there that I haven't watched <laughs> yet. It's just, holy gosh, there's just too many good things to watch. It's hard to get them all in. And retired for life. Brian, Brian had a video out there, and of course I watched it this morning. Uh, what was it about? Well, he had something to do with his uh, power shed. I guess there's something getting in there. Uh, probably a bird and trying to make a nest up on the top of the in the peak of the roof, and all the all the grass and straw and stuff is all falling out and down on top of everything in the garage. So, but I think he's got that fixed up now. And he was working on his wood chipper too for his tractor. And, Got his uh, weed whacker going, and a few other things there, I guess. And Rick is still splitting wood, great big wood there he cut up there this morning. As I said to him, I said, I don't think you like splitting small wood. <laughs> it's all big stuff, big, 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 24 to 36 inch. But I think that's the that's the size of wood that he likes. I think. And now this fellow here, well, he's he just never know about that fellow. <laughs> Twin Brook Acres, Rick, Rick at Twin Brook Acres. I don't know if we're going to see a antique tool video today or not. And Craig at Everyday Projects. Mm, yeah, he had a video out too, and I know I can't say so he, I can remember now what that was. Gravely small engine repair. Ernie, Ernie had his uh, uh, 73, I think it's a 73 C8 Gravely walk behind tractor that he put the mulching kit on, so he was trying that out. Then we have Darren Wells, different stuff. He's in Newfoundland, and Father and Son Outdoors, he's in Newfoundland. And we have Jeff, the God Log Father. He's always got a great video there when he puts one out, and it's he's quite often with them, and, but he has a good chat usually at the the end of his videos, I find, uh, about his business and what's going on and why he does what he does and what he's using. And, yeah, I quite enjoy that channel. That's good. Down Family Farm. Well, them people are about the busiest people that you could ever find, I think. They were at a uh, uh, wood show there this week or this past week. So that that uh, video was up this morning, and I watched that. Nice show that they were at there. All kinds of different types of machinery. One uh, machine there, you, you load the rounds on top of the machine, and the machine hauls them in, and it splits the, the wood vertically. And you can adjust it to... Any any size wood you want. So that's quite a machine. And big sons, I'd say he's still cutting grass. I'm not cutting yet, big sons. <laughs> Todd Raven, yeah. Tucker and I out in the boat, also in Newfoundland. 
outdoors in the 608. I just watched the video this morning of them. I just watched their video this morning, uh, outdoors in the 608. They were at the Hoosier Firewood Hysteria. And uh, had a great video there this morning on, on that. And Larry Cluck, Ross on the Land, Club Dora. And Alan had a, a video on uh, the Hoosier Firewood Hysteria also. And he had a video out this morning of them walking through woods somewhere now. I can't remember <laughs> where it was now, but big, great, big, big, big trees. Holy cat, some of them are, yeah, they're 12 feet around at the base. Big pines, I guess. 150 to 120 feet tall. That's quite a spot. And what else do we have here? We have uh, gone uh, the Bradleys on Catbird Hill. And another fellow that has, was at the Hoosier Firewood Hysteria was Dell in the backyard with Dell. So there we go. A little overview of what's going on today in the world of YouTube. It would be a good thing for for us to go and have a look at those channels. They're, they're all great channels. They all do something a little different. They all have different ways of doing their videos. And they all have different topics. So, I guess that's going to come to the end of this fireside chat because I went over the 30 minutes. I don't know if he's noticed or not, but I had to stop and restart. <laughs> oh dear, I always do something wrong. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn you around here just for a second. So there we go now. I'm I've been slowly trying to train myself just to kind of look at one certain spot on the camera so that it makes me kind of look like I'm looking into the camera, not off to the side. Just trying to make a better video. So I'm kind of just got my eye on one spot just to see if it looks any better in the video. So. I guess that'll be the end of uh, the video today. Like I mentioned, I guess, or maybe I didn't mention, or I, I'm going to mention that my son is coming here today at noontime. It's my son's birthday is on Tuesday, so we're just having a little get-together here this morning. And uh, I... Uh, <laughs> Birthdays just don't excite me too much, so. <laughs> and they don't seem to excite my son too much either. It's just another day. Anyway, some people get all wound up about birthdays and, and have to practice them for a month, you know. Anyway. <laughs> so, that's what's going to go on today. Oh, yes, I think I did mention that. So, yeah, because I didn't know whether I'd have time to do my Sunday chat or not. So, there we are. All right, I guess I'm back again. I, I think I remembered a couple of things from some of the channel's videos. And uh, Grampy's workshop, the last one they did there, he was working on his snow plow on his uh, very nice Massey Ferguson tractor. So he was taking his wings off and doing a, an analysis as to how they how they worked out for the winter. And I'd say they worked out pretty good with another a little bit more uh, tweaking here and there that I think they are going to be fine. So he's got her set up for the summer mode now, the blade, so he can do some grading and some other work. So that uh, 
that video was on, on Friday. That was the last one I saw, anyway. And then uh, Boda Bob, uh, Boda, uh, or Boda Bob changed his oil in his Kubota tractor. There, the last video I seen. So that was a good one. And the Ross on the land, the last video I saw was that he had bought a a steel MS an MS two fifty I think chainsaw to replace the Milwaukee battery saw. Not necessarily replace it, but uh, use the gas powered one for the heavier work and use the battery one for the lighter work. And his daughter Madison, she did a great job of of explaining the saw and and uh, getting the cone and all that stuff. You know, she should be in the she should be working for steel. Promoting their products, that's for sure. Great job, Madison. So I think that's about all I got for there now. I did remember a couple. <laughs> anyway, that's the way it is with me. Um, another little update on the 68 Plymouth Sport Fury. Um, I'll just get you over here so I can... I'll have to switch you around here. There, I got my spot to keep my eyes on so that I can kind of look like I'm looking right into the camera at you. So, yeah, the uh, the 68 uh, Sport Fury, I got talking to the fellow yesterday that owns it. So, apparently the car came from Pennsylvania quite a few years ago and uh, had been sort of fixed up at that point. And I think there might have been two owners on Prince Edward Island here before this fellow bought it. And uh, he has had it for 22 years. So they, my son and him, took the, uh, the clutch out of it Monday evening. It took about two hours or so and then ordered the parts and put the clutch back in on Friday evening. The clutch was an 11 inch diameter, apparently there was, uh, there's different clutches, I guess, so one I think was 10 and a half inch and the other one was 11, so he put the 11 in it, so they finished that up and uh, the fellow came on Saturday and picked it up and away he went with it, so. So that's the story on the 68 Plymouth, the Sport Fury, two-door hardtop, 383 four-speed manual. But the four cars in, in very rough shape. Anyhow, I guess that's going to be it. So um, uh, have a great week wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Thanks for watching. And uh, I've got a few new subscribers, so thank you too. And uh, we'll see you all again on another one. Goodbye now.